Greetings, I'm Barrent and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today I'm excited to show you a new game coming to GameFound. It's called Conquest Princess by Fight in a Box. This is developed by Peter and Patrick Yang and Seppi Yoon. We are going to join the Temporal Intergalactic Armed Response Agency, also known as Tierra. Our team is going to stop the fashion tyrant Mugaga every step of the way that we possibly can. This game is for one to four players. It is fully co-op and has a unique bag pool and bag building concept to it that I'm excited to show off. Also, there is no player elimination. We win or lose as a team. I'm excited to show you this game. If you're excited to see Conquest Princess, then I need you to meet me at the table. We are going to play through the tutorial mission, which is called Save Ashi Marooned. We're going to save Captain Ashi. He has been marooned and we have to save him. We have an objective card right here that we have to complete. It says that we have to get Ashi to a fully repaired Mendery and heal him. And we have to also transform one of our agents. We'll see if we can do that. I'm going to start the setup here. Once we get that completely done, we're going to go try to complete this mission. Now, sadly, we will lose this mission if we ever run out of power, and we'll show you how that happens during the playthrough. Now, we showed up just in time. Some versions of you has already heard these instructions, so we'll keep it quick. Captain Ashimaru has, in fact, come down with space madness. He may be a hedgehog and a fashion hunter, but he now has space madness. And the minions of Mugaga, the fashion tyrant, are invading the system. We have to rescue Ashimaru before the invasion captures him. I do want to say this is a prototype for the Kickstarter. Everything you say he, see here is subject to change. This is not going to be the actual captain in the game. And any other thing you see here may be changed as the Kickstarter goes forward and even into production. And while I'm going through setup, I'll even explain a couple of them that I already know of already. The next thing we have to do is get our ship all set up. As you can see, everything is critically damaged right now except for the comms. And one thing that's going to be cool about this, if you are playing solo, the setup for this is going to be different where these wings can come out so you have full access to everything as you're playing through. It's not all condensed like this with things in the wrong way like that, but I like the way it looks like this is so why I'd like to show you it off the way you would if you're playing with multiple players, not just solo. But do be aware that is something they are working on to make it so it is also solo player friendly. The one that is not damaged is the comms, and it does have an ability that you can do as with, with your characters as you're playing through the game, where we can return all tiles on the Tierra to the bag, and I'll show you how that works, of course, during the playthrough. There's a section down here for power cubes. I'm going to place four of them there. There is a total of eight you could place out on the board, but the other four are located up here, and they're up there because at this point, we're kind of coming in damaged. We're just really hoping we can make it through this mission, and so some of our power cubes are already disintegrated, and we don't have access to them. But in future missions, you'll have access to all eight power cubes, unless, of course, as you're playing through the mission, something happens. And these power cubes can be used for multiple things, such as taking extra actions during your turn, or be able to actually transform your character and make them a more powerful version of themselves. And that's just a couple of the things that those power cubes can do. The next thing we have to set up is our two fashion decks. We have a power-up fashion deck, and we have a fast fashion. The power-up deck I'm just going to place right here. This is also considered our life force. We're not going to be taking damage, or we can Sorry, we are going to be taking damage, but if we ever take too much damage, the Tierra will step in and take the damage for us. It kind of reminds me of Moria, if you've ever seen the movie or the show Farscape. It's kind of a living ship that's going to take the damage, and these are slowly going to be removed as you take damage, or as the ship actually absorbs the damage or takes it for you. And once these are all gone, then you have lost the particular mission, and you have to start again. Now, on the flip side, these are also power-ups for your characters. So you're going to be taking some of this essence from this ship, but you're going to be able to use it for yourself to be able to do some cool things. For example, here is one right here. I can use this to return these type of things to the bag, and it's a starter symbol, and it goes on my head. And I'll show you all about those things when we get over here to creating our characters. They have multiple slots for different pieces of fashion. The fast fashion deck, though, we're going to split this in half as well, and we're going to take half of the power deck that that we have right here and remove it from the very first mission. Again, we're coming in. Things are not going too well for us. We're banged up a little bit trying to get here to get uh, to save Ashi Maru, but we, so let's see if
if we can make it with only that mud mini cards. Now, when I mentioned that these are the life force of the uh, ship, they're also ones that we're gonna be able to use more than once. They're basically upgrades for our characters Fast fashions are all going to be specific consumables that we're going to use only once is usually how it works. For example, here's one where I have an all raise riot revolver. I can disintegrate your next uh, attack here is taken as though you were on an adjacent space. And then we'd be removing this. Now, one other thing you can use these fashion cards for is if you get something you don't want, you can just straight up disintegrate it and gain a power cube, which is going to be able to do multiple things for you, like I said earlier. Our tier has already been on on the run it's already been through some skirmishes so at this point we're going to be putting out some of the enemies and some of our hit locations already out on this these are going to be placed out on certain numbers as specified by the mission that we're doing these are symbolizing the fact that we've actually already kind of had a little bit of conflicts and we're shooting these things off of our ship we're also going to place out four enemies as well these are going to go into these numbered places these are specific places where uh, if you draw cards and have to place enemies in these places and you already have an enemy there that's when you're going to have to take damage or potentially lose some of your power up cards over there now each of these tiles has come from our specific bag so now that we've had them on the board that's less of those good shots in this bag so we're going to have to try to get these back into the bag that's a really cool way system here is that it's not only a bag building but it's also like a bag pool you only have a certain amount of these two to tokens out here so you have to try to use different actions or cards to get these back into the bag so it's easier for you to actually take out these monsters with these out on the board you have less hits in your bag moving back over to this board you're also going to be placing hits out on these as well at certain times and those will take up some of your hits as well needing to clear off these is going to be another way to get those back into your bag after mission one you're going to see that these right here will start having specific tiles and if you can get these into your bag they're going to do specific uh, things too along with counting as a hit for example if you're able to draw if you're able to get this into your bag and pull it from your bag not only is it a hit but you get to draw a power up card which is absolutely awesome that's a great way to get some fashion right away now during the tutorial we're not going to have access to those particular tiles but i did want to just mention them in case you're wondering what those are out on the board like i said before we've been through a lot of stuff already i'm going to put two of what are called danger tokens right here they're going to be what's how these are going to be the number of cards that we're going to be disintegrating from the top of that deck and every time something awful happens to us like i said if an agent would be killed then the tier will step in and take disruption which is going to be the disintegrating of these cards and it's going to be equal to the number here but that's not it if you have to take disruption not only are you going to disintegrate cards you're then going to add another one to the stack making the disruption even more deadly as time goes on now again, other ways that disruption can happen is if you place one of these where there already is one, or as the time goes, and these eventually come down and would want to move down onto these onto this particular row here, that would be another time where disruption is going to take place because the Tierra will step in to change the timeline to help our agents. The last thing we have to do is get our event deck ready. We have ours for mission zero. There are other ones. This is the one for mission one, and these are loosely put together in a campaign, or like I said, you can play them as standalone scenarios we'll go ahead and place down two cards and then we'll move on to getting our characters all set up we're not going to do anything with these until it comes time to activate them and then i'll explain exactly what you're seeing on these cards now it's time to set up all of our players the first one we're going to do is set up the blue player he is going to get a gauntlet which is right here and we're going to place the action tokens on there that are right here this is going to signify what actions he's doing and the cool thing about this is you're going to pick the different actions by placing these certain cubes or these tokens in different places and why is that important well if you notice up here there's a transformation sequence so if you can use this exact sequence and have the enough power cubes you can transform your character and how that works is you start with a specific gear card here on your fashion plate on top of that we're also able to put other things like boots hands helmets and back like you saw one of those power-up cards was a helmet and once you transform that you'll be able to flip this over and the power will become more powerful on top of that we do have two armor patches as we take damage we'll remove these armor patches and if you ever again take damage once the armor patches are gone that's when disruption happens and we don't want any of that to happen notice this one right here that's one where if you had a power cube one of the options 
options is to be able to take a fifth action using that particular power cube. Of course, you can always just store your power cubes up here and use them when you want to, but you can only ever use one at a time no matter how many you had powered up up there. And of course, you can only ever hold four. Down here, you see a pet co-pilot. We don't start with that in the tutorial mission. That's going to be actually part of mission one. It's really cool. We have to go save our pet co-pilots in mission one. Now, our blue player is all set up, but let's quickly look at this card here. Right here, we have Slipstream Mesh. Start. Ta starter, take a power cube. And this symbol right here means that this happens at the beginning of the blue player's turn or if, or anybody else's turn if they're in the same place as the blue player and want to take advantage of that power. And you'll see how this works. That's a lot of how the co-op works in this game is being able to share our different abilities among our characters. Moving on to our second player, we have our green player. It's all of them set up exactly the same except our transformation sequence are all different on each of our characters. He does have an ability here where if you perform this particular action, your, your first one of the engage does not end your turn. This particular action you're seeing on this card is one you can only do once per turn. And if you do do it on your turn, that actually ends your turn. But with his special power, that means we can do it free, or not free, but the first one we do does not actually end the turn. So we wanted to, we could do that particular one right away and then don't go moving around or shooting or things of that nature. It's really, it's actually really good. Actually, I can't, I, I, I can't tell you enough how every one of these powers actually has a very good purpose in this game. And it's super cool to try to figure out which characters you want to be in different places so you can take advantage of the powers that each of these characters have. Our last character is our purple character. And the char power that this one has is that the agent space is a teleporter which is going to be easy ways to get off of the Terra onto those other boards where Ashi is and also back into the ship and also you can teleport around the ship as well. And here's our red player, our big guns. This is our big gun here. He's got an ability that says that your first shoot with the core suit each turn, I can draw two tiles and choose one and return the other one. And that is super huge when you know you have to take that shot and make it. Now that we've seen all of our characters, it's time to place them out on the Tierra. There are specific places you put them for this mission. And that's gonna be on the dice that you see out there. So our green one is gonna go up here. He is right here. There are all these acrylic standees. They look really cool. The next one is our purple one right here. This is our purple character. This is the one that's able to teleport around. It looks really cool, like a teleporter type of person. And then we got our blue one right here. This one is the one that's allowing us to be able to gain a power cube at the start of the turn. And then the last one we have is this guy right here. This is our red agent right here. He looks pretty cool. Now there are a couple things they're working on right now. First off, when this game comes out, they've already decided to make the Tierra bigger because right now a lot of the bases don't all fit on the area. On top of that, they're not sure if they're going to keep this as a big base like this. It takes up a lot of room. They might change that up. We'll see how things go as the game progresses. Let's start Conquest Princess. To do that, we have to determine a lead agent. At the beginning of the game, it can be anybody. There's nothing preventing anybody from being lead agent, but as we go forward, there are going to be criteria that prevent certain people from being lead agents, and you'll see how that works as we go forward. Forward. Now, deciding who is going to be the lead agent is kind of important because once you choose that person, you're going to go clockwise around the table. So you're trying to want to get a strategy that will work really well for that turn. And the enemy will always activate at the end during the event step. So you do have to control all four of the characters and go through all their motions before that happens. And controlling all four characters is actually not that daunting. This is a very easy game to control multiple characters in. So we're going to make this blue character be the first character. She will do her actions first, and I'll quickly go through those. There are primarily only three actions you can really do a turn, and they're located here on your gauntlet. The first one is a move action, where if you do that, you can either A, move your agent around the ship or around the board where you are, or the other one is you can move in your current space to pick up a tile or a die that's in your space. For this tutorial mission, there's only tiles out on the board, but in some missions, there's going to be dice, as you saw on the actual board itself, and I'll point to them when we get there, that are going to be used during other missions. The next one is our shoot action. This one allows us to draw from our bag, and depending on what token we draw from our bag, something's going to happen. So, for example, if I drew this one, that would be a miss. Oh, no, a miss is bad news city. Because not only does it miss, but this then goes onto your player board, and that can be good and bad. But for now, because right now it's out of the bag, which makes it 
better for our people to find hits, but also out here means you're going to be potentially losing an action if you decide not to keep if you decide to keep that in that area going forward. The last one is your engage action, and like I said previously, this is one that you're going to be using the environment, but it also will end your turn. There's also engagement activities that you can use on each of the different planet boards based on the missions that you're in. So those are our four actions we can do. Now that we have our first player, we would normally do the event step here, but for the first turn, the event step does not happen. And the reason it happens after you choose the starting player is if there is ever a dispute on whether or not you're gonna pick certain cards or have certain things happen during the event step, the starting player actually does get to break any type of ties that happen. Once the event step is complete, which it is, because we're not gonna do it, we go on to what's called the lock and load step, which is where we're going to be clearing out any of our loaded areas and locking in certain tiles. This is where if we ever did spend any power cubes over here, we would be returning them back to the supply. The next thing you would do is return any of these locked tiles. So say we did have a tile there from the previous turn, any one of them that was locked previously, we would remove it. Now, if any of them showed up for this turn, we could choose to lock that tile there. Oh, actually, I shouldn't say we choose. We do lock that tile there, and that, of course, takes that miss out of the bag for us going forward. And when it's locked like that, we don't get to use this particular action that turn. We only would get three that turn, unless you wanted to use, of course, a power cube. Now, if we did lock any power cubes, there is a bonus to that. We do get to grab a power cube from the Halo, which is a good thing. So the, there always are good rewards almost on anything that happens. But, of course, missing is never fun. At this point, we would now begin the turn. And remember when I talked about this starter action? That is something that has to happen at the beginning of, the, of their actual activation. Now you can only ever use one starter action around, so if you're in a space that has multiple starter actions, you have to choose which one you do, and you have to do this before you do anything with your action coins. Now of course, this one states that at the start I get to take a power cube. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. I'm going to grab one, put it right there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a move action and we're going to take another move action. So we're going to do two move actions right off the start. And with the first move action, I'm going to move, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this tile and place it back into my bag, giving myself more hits. I think that's going to be fantastic. Then I'm going to move my character down here to the, what is, what is this? This is the comms area. The next action we're going to do is we're going to take out one of those bad guys that is there. We're going to do a shoot action. So all of this is in the comms area here. So we're going to shoot at this guy right here. Now when we do, we draw one token from the bag. And if it's a hit, we take him out. But remember, we can use the power of other people's fashions. And we can use this one since we're in this square. We're going to use this. It says your first shoot with the core suit each turn draws two tiles. Choose one, return the other one. So I am going to take advantage of his core suit and be able to draw two tokens from this bag and be able to hopefully hit this guy. Let's see how we do it. We have two tokens here. We got a hit and we got a hit. So we're going to take this, remove that one from the board and put the hit there. I will put this hit back into here and we'll return this to the enemy launch bay, which is found right over here on the main, one of the main boards. The last action we're going to do is the engage action. You, if you have a way of doing it and be able to maneuver the best you can, your engage action is usually about the last one you want to do because like I said, it will end your turn. So doing it last is a perfect time. And if we look at the comms card here, by doing the engage action, I am returning all tiles to the Tierra bag, which would be awesome. So we're going to take all of these tiles that are out on that board and place them all back into the bag. So now we have every single hit tile that we had out there back in here. So now our chances of hitting just went up astronomically. Oh, so good. Now the last thing we can do is we could choose to transform or of course we could also use our power cube to take a fifth action if we want to. But remember one of the objectives in order to win is to be able to have one of our characters transform. We have to have one of them transform and remember to transform we have to do that exact sequence and we did do the exact sequence right here but we also need four power cubes to make the transformation. So hopefully we can do that exact thing in about four more turns because remember at the start of each of her turns she's just going to gain a free power cube. 
At this point, moving on to the next player would be green, so we would pass the bag to that person so they know it's their turn and they're ready for action. The place that I am is in engineering, and I know the wings are all kind of not fanned out so you can't read everything, it's kind of upside down, but it says here, critical damage in engineering. I can use an engage action to repair engineering, which may be something we might want to do, but there's a bad guy here. I don't think I want to heap them here there either. So I think we're going to shoot that guy first and see how it goes. So we're going to slide our gold coin down to the fight action there, or the shoot action, we're going to take our magic bag, give it a truffle shake here, and grab out one token. Now remember, I'm not next to that red guy anymore, so I can only draw one token. And we got a hit! That's fantastic! We're able to take that guy out. So we'll put down our token right there and move him over into that enemy launch bay. With my next action, we're going to try to repair engineering. But before we do, remember, doing an engage action is going to end my turn. So we're going to do a move action first, and we're going to put that tile we just shot right back into our bag. Now let's take that engage action to repair engineering. Now normally that would end our turn, but through the power of fashion, he's got the smart suit armor. Your first engage action does not end your turn, so he is super cool because he can actually do two engage actions. So we're not only going to repair the engine one, or, or sorry, engineering once, we're going to repair it twice. I'm going to put this one down here as well, and we're going to repair engineering up two levels. Now what that means for us is we're going to take our engineering card that we have, and normally it would be on the yellow side where we'd repair any ship sector except comms. But since I repaired it twice, we can now repair any ship sector or add the token to the Titan tile to the bag, which would be here. Now, like I said, for this particular mission, those aren't available to us, but normally these would be out on the board. And if we ever did an engage action here again, this would go into our bag, which would be super good because we could take advantage of its power as we draw it out, as well as it being an action hit from the bag. Next is going to be Purple's turn. Purple is probably going to take a shoot action to get rid of that one, then move over to the engineering and also begin repairing our ship. Remember, we have to get our, you know, what is his name? Ashi. We have to get Ashi to the men fully repaired Mendery, and in order to get him off of that board, we have to teleport him. So we have to not only fix the teleporter, but the Mendery. The only one we really don't, we do have to fix the wardrobe, because in order to transform, we have to have a repaired wardrobe place as well. Oh my gosh, we get all these places fixed, and <laughs> there's bad guys still coming at us, oh no! So let's do that. We're going to take the shoot action, let's see how we do. I'm going to shuffle up my little bag here, we're going to draw a token out here. Now sadly, again, not with the red player, so hopefully this is a hit. Oh no, it's a critical fail! But but not only that, I'm going to get attacked back from that monster. This is a terrible token to draw. I'm going to have to use, lose one of my armor patches because he attacked me instead of me actually getting him. I know we didn't kill him, but I think we got to go get more stuff repaired. I'm going to move and then I'm going to do a double engage action. Remember, I'm going to be in the same spot as this guy is so I can use his power of fashion. We'll move right over here to engineering, and like I said, I am in his space, so I have the ability to use that smart armor. We're going to heal up two places. What are we going to save? Now, if I don't have the teleporter ready to go, then I can't bring Ashi back here. And if I don't have the Mendry ready to go, I can't heal him. I think it's best to get him off that planet. I think that's going to be the best plan. So on the heads up assisted logistic orbital, or no, better known as the halo, which is around our ship, we're going to repair our uh, teleporter here. It says status. You may only teleport agents to this space. They do not get fast fashion, but we're going to repair it twice. So boom, status. You may teleport. We can teleport at anywhere we want, especially with that purple character. She's able to use her space. This agent space is a teleporter space. So I can put her anywhere. And so if she's standing in the Mendry and I teleport Ashi, he'll teleport to the Mendry and he'll be able to heal, which would be actually fantastic. It'd be a really good plan. Also, whenever you use a teleporter, you're able to draw a fast fashion and you can use that fast fashion or you can discard it to grow or disintegrated, I'm sorry, to grab a power cube, which would be pretty good to use for an extra turn, or be able to still eventually power your character up. Red is our only character left. I think he's really good at killing things, so he's going to go shoot something. 
I think he's going to move over here with one of his actions. Then he's going to do the shoot action. Remember, he can do that twice. So he's going to grab two tokens out of here. Now, he can only do it one time a turn. He's going to grab two. He got himself double hits, which is awesome. I wish the purple person would have gotten just one hit, but that's okay. We'll put that token there. We'll put him back in the launch bay. Return this token back to the bag. And then since we have to repair the Mendry as well, he's going to move over to the engineering and he's going to repair the Mendry. We'll move our character right over here and we'll grab our Mendry card and begin repairing it. And it's only on the yellow side now, so it says heal one armor patch on one agent in the Mendry. So we'll put that right down there. Our halo is slowly filling back up with our ship's abilities. It's going to be kind of cool. Now this token here, if you ever did draw it, you get to heal up an armor patch and it also counts as a hit. That's the end of the first turn. We're going to go back to the top of the round where we have to choose our starting person. And in order to do that, what you're going to do is add up all the locked ones or all the tokens you have here in the load area and how many t coins that you have used. So this person has five. All the rest of our characters have used four. So at this point, I can choose which one I want to do. We're going to, except for the one that has five, five out there because that one does count so that person can't actually be the leader now if there was ever a person that decided not to use all of their tokens or did the engage action and be with it not being the last one that person would only have used three of the tokens so that person would be the starting player and that's how that works and of course if there is a tie since all of our characters have used four except for one person who did that critical miss and got blasted then those people would discuss, decide who would be the one that they'd want to have go first and move on from there. I'm going to have our red character go first this time. And now that we've chosen that, we'll move into the event step. The first thing we have to do is decide which one of these telemetry cards we want to do. They're both going to be bad because they're all going to have to do with activating the enemy. What you're seeing here are different symbols. The first one we have here is enemy attacks. That's the first symbol we see. The next one is we see drop, which means the enemy is going to drop. We're going to flip over a row from above the planet and place it on the top of the battleground. And I'll show you how that works. Now, if, you're ever, if we go into the next mission, you're going to see other things on those cards that are going to activate other creatures as well because each of these are going to have unique things going on inside of the game. For example, this one would shift th things certain directions. This one would put out people and then the ones would attack us. Notice this thing here. This is a whole nother thing that we haven't seen yet and I'll show it to you at the end of this game. But one of the enemies we're going to be facing in mission one is a mechopede. So it, there are a lot of cool things going on. But back to this card, we're going to be a, we're going to attack then we're going to put a new place out, and then we're going to fill up those areas with new bad guys. We're going to put out our enemies. This one, though, on the other hand, is going to drop the, the enemies down one, then attack, and then place out those enemies in those particular places. I think it's better to do this card, because that would protect Ashi, instead of Ashi under fire. I think they're kind of giving me a clue here. So we're going to choose to do this card right here. The first thing we're going to check is our ship to see if there's any enemies on the Tierra, and there is one enemy right there. So this enemy will then deal one damage to any person that is standing in the square. They'll lose one of their armor patches. If there are ever multiple people in that place, we could choose which one of us is going to take the damage. Now, sadly, we don't have any in that space. So since there are no enemies there, the agent, the Tierra is actually going to be taking the damage. And remember, the Tierra is going to take damage because it's going to become disrupted. So we'll start by disintegrating cards from the top of our power-up card equal to the amount of danger, the equal to the amount of the danger level. Right now it's two. So we're going to take one, two, and we are going to disintegrate these. We'll place them right here. Now remember, if this deck ever runs out, that is how you lose the scenario. And now we'll add one more danger level token to the halo. Now we're going to check the invasion board, and we have one here, and he's going to then drop down, and they're going to attack everybody in this line, and any agent in the way is going to take a disruption or at least lose an armor patch. Now, sadly, Ashi doesn't have any armor patches to lose, so he is going to gain another set of disruptions to our poor Tierra. We'll take three cards this time. One, two, 
three. And without looking at them, we are just going to disintegrate them and add another danger level to the board. So in, if you notice, it's probably best to get rid of all of these guys from the board as fast as you can. Now that that's done, this is gonna be super cool. We're going to drop this down. So you may recognize this little maneuver from an old 8-bit game that you may have played a long time ago in your childhood if you're as old as I am. But now we have even more people stepping out here and potentially doing damage to Ashi. Now remember, if we would have took this card, we would have moved these first and then attacked. So he would have been hit by two times. I would have gotten to lose even more. But alas, we were smart. We grabbed the right one. We're now going to fill up the board with our different enemies on the Tierra. Looking at the numbers we have to place down, two, four, and six. So we'll grab three people here. We have one in four, one in six, and one in two. Now, lucky for us, oh no, two is over here. This is eight. If this would have been here, this play person would have taken that and put it back in the bag for us, which would have been super helpful. But instead, nope, it's sitting over there in number eight. After resolving our complete action card here, of course, starting from the left to right, we'll place this into the disintegrated events. One thing I didn't mention is that the comms card here is the one that's telling us the amount of cards we're able to place out. Since we have it at full power, we're able to know two cards in the row here to decide what we're going to do. It's kind of the Tierra's way of helping us predict the future. On top of that, it's able to add all those tokens to the Bag of Destiny, which is pretty awesome. I'm a big fan of that. Now, of course, if it's flipped over, we're only able to see the first one status card. So it's good to have, of course, everything able to go. I also want to mention that the reason we took damage from that attack is we would normally do damage to the ship, but our ship had doesn't have any ability here. So instead of instead of being able to attack the wardrobe, so say we had our wardrobe card like this, and this guy attacked us, we would just lose this again. We'd have to try to repair it. But since we didn't have any, that's why our ship took some of that disruption. We're going to move into our turns. Now that we are done with that, we're going to lock and load, and we're just going to load these all up here, and our red guy is going to go blast things. First thing he is going to do is he's going to use, of course, the smart armor, which is absolutely amazing, to engage in the engine room to be able to heal a area. I think he's going to heal the Mendry because, of course, we have to get this to full power. So he's going to heal the Mendry, which now allows us to heal two armor patches on one agent in the Mendry or add the heal token to the bag. And I said, like I said, we're not going to be using those tokens in this particular playthrough. But if you're going on from mission one and on, we would be able to use those. He's then going to move, and then I think he's going to double shoot because there are two pesky dudes right over here. I want to take out both of those. So the first shot we're going to do is we're going to use his super awesome ability here and we're going to draw out two tokens. Actually, no, I'm only going to draw one the first time because if I hit him, then I can do the other one. Oh, look at that. I hit him. We're going to get rid of this guy. We're going to send him right back from where he came from. And then we're going to take the other one and we're going to, now we're going to use our suit to be able to draw two tiles and choose one. Well, I'm going to choose that hit. I don't think there's any reason not to. So we're going to get rid of that hit and we'll put that right there. He goes away. That was fantastic. That was four actions. That's how fast that goes. At the start of Blue's turn, since that one person is next, she's going to grab a power cube because of her starter card here, and she's going to reload all of her stuff here. She'll reload it first, then I get to do the power cube. At this point, I am going to do a shoot action, because there's a bad guy in my square. We already saw what happens when bad guys are in our square. Not good. So we're going to draw a tile out of here and see how it goes. We have drawn... Oh, a miss! We're going to lock that in. You know, I'm going to shoot him again. We're going to try to get this guy. We're going to grab another token out of here. Hopefully it's a hit. It is a hit. We were able to take him out. So we're going to put that on the board and remove the guy. Next, I am going to move and then I'm going to use the engage action. So our hit was able to take this guy out. I'll place this down here. We'll remove that guy from the board. Next, I'm going to use my, uh, was it the move action to grab this token back, I guess. I didn't realize, I, I did this in the wrong order. Actually, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use the engage action to grab all these tokens back. That's what I'm going to do. I don't think there's any reason to use the move action. We're just going to straight up use the engage action. Totally fine. Now, using that engage action, of course, does end my turn. So I didn't have to, I wasn't able to use this other action token. Green will reload up here. We're going to give all our tokens back up there. And we're going to start by repairing the wardrobe because <laughs> it already got blasted once. We'll put down our damp, well, mildly repaired wardrobe. It says, discard the power line. You may not power up, which is no good. We want to power up. And what it means by power line over here, you can see there's multiple card possible cards that we can lay out. And starting from mission one on, you're going to have these out here that you can choose to take. 
And if you want, and when you do decide to choose which one you want, you'd either grab one and get rid of these two, or you'd grab one of these and get rid of the other one. And in this case, you could potentially discard these. Now, discarding them does not disintegrate them, which is a different thing altogether. So just be aware that you can discard cards, but once they're disintegrated, they're gone forever. They go over there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot again. There's that dude on our ship. I don't want him there. We're going to try to take him out, see if we can do this. Let's draw it up and oh no, he also got blasted real good. Boom. <laughs> he lost an armor patch. Let's shoot this guy again. <laughs> Guy's no good. Let's shoot him again. Let's see how we do here. We got ourselves a hit. That's fantastic. We're able to hit him. Then we're going to do another engage. We'll place down our hit on the board and remove that guy. Awesome. Our ship is free of badness, which is fantastic. And now I'm going to fully heal our wardrobe, which now gives us the ability to power add a power up tile, or I can reshuffle the discarded powers into the deck by using this engage action. So it does give us that ability, like I said before, to get those token, those cards back into that deck. At this point, we have to lock and loads. So we're going to lock that cube. We're not going to be able to use it, but that's okay. We are all loaded up here and we can use three actions. And what we're going to do is we're going to move. And at this point, I am going to move again, and then I'm going to use my engage action. We're going to move by putting this tile back in. We're going to move over to the Mendry, and then at this point, I am going to do my teleport action, which is going to teleport Ashi into this square because she has that ability that says uh, the agent space is a teleporter. So I can teleport right to that space with him. So that's awesome. We have one of the things completed, I believe. We have to get Ashi to a fully repaired Mendry and heal him. So he is at the Mendry and he's able to be healed here. Oh, I think I still have to do an action in order to heal him is my guess. It says heal two armor patches or on one agent in the Mandry. So I think I do still have to spend an action there, or sorry, an engage action to be able to heal him. Funny enough, our turn is complete, so we have to pick a new agent, and it can only be the blue agent or the red agent. The red agent has four cubes. I shouldn't say cubes, I'm sorry, four coins. And our blue one has three coins, but this one is also considered a coin, so that's four, but I didn't use that one. So we do have four as well. I think we will start with the blue person. No, I'm going to keep with the red person. I think it's best to say the red person. He can maybe take out some of those people right away, and we can adjust from there. At this point, we can draw our next telemetry card and see what... Oh, we've got... What's this? This is a crisis card. We have to resolve this. One agent takes two damage, or all agents take one. Disintegrate this card and draw again. Oh, barf. Okay, I think I'm going to... I'm just going to have a red guy take two damage. He's just going to take both of his armor patches and we're going to remove those. Or maybe I should have the purple one. Oh, the purple already has a damage. The blue one's the only other one. Oh no, our red guy's going to be good. He, he's, the, he's the powerhouse of the group here. <laughs> we'll draw another telemetry card and place it down here. Here we are. Wow, look at this. Okay, so we're going to place one at zero and then it's going to attack. And then we're going to place one at six and eight, but the invasion is not going to happen. Or I can have the invasion happen. There's nobody for him to hit out there. And I'd put one in one, seven, and five. Looking at our ship, if we put out a guy first and then attacked, I have nobody in the transporter. So the transporter would already be hurt again. Our transporter would go back to not being fully functional, which I guess technically is not the end of the world. I don't think there's a lot we need the teleporter for because we already got her him here. We just need to heal him and we need to transform with her because she's the only one that has power cubes. <laughs> so I'm not sure which one to do. I think it's Let's go with this one. Let's try the too many of them. That'll be just fine. So we're going to put a person in zero. And at this point now, they will attack. Now, of course, the board over the invader board, we don't have any agents on it at all. So all these guys are firing down and nothing's going to happen. Uh, do note that there, if you see these dice out here, these are going to be used for some of the other missions, particularly the one where we have to help our pets, which is our next mission. And that's going to all be done with this extra board here. So on top of not only keeping the tier alive, we have to rescue our pets by collecting dice and be able to move up this chain to be able to get the pets off of the different parts of our conquest princess that has been destroyed. That's kind of how the next mission plays out. In case I don't get a chance to show you the mission, I want you to know that there's so much more going into this game. That like, for example, this is a whole other part of the game that's going to be coming out when it comes to mission one. Now mission two would have something different. You wouldn't be using this, be using something completely different. 
different. They keep on adding new things and new excitement to the game. But according to our card, Zero is going to attack at this point, so our teleporter is going to get damaged here. So we'll flip it back to the yellow side. We'll then place out ones in six and in eight as well. One there and one here, which isn't too bad. We could probably take both of those guys out, I hope. We'll disintegrate this event. And then the red player was already loaded. I loaded him already. So he could get to the Mendry and potentially heal, or we can just start taking people out. I think we're going to take people out. Our red guy is going to move one to the teleporter, and he's then going to shoot. Now, I know there's not a space here, but if I remember right, when I was talking to the designer, he said that this uh, is going to all be open. They can all be able to move into this space. This just happens to cover it. I could be wrong, and if I am, please check out the pinned comments of this video or any of the subtitles, of course, that are running across the bottom of the screen. Anything that is found post-launch that might be an error, you'll find in the the comment section of this video in a pinned comment. But I'm going to move over here because I believe he told me that all this stuff is going to be open. And I'm going to shoot that guy. I'm going to use a shoot action and I'm going to grab my bag and I'm going to use two tokens to grab this guy. Bang. Let's get him. Let's see what he got here. Oh, I don't like that one. Let's see what the other one is. Oh no, I got a miss and a, <laughs> and a critical miss. I'm going to have to take one of those. I think we'll take the miss. And at this point, we will try to shoot him again. This goes back in the bag. Now, I only get to draw one because, oh no, I failed that, that shot. That was bad news. That was bad news city. Let's see what we got. This time we actually got him. So we'll put this out on the board and we'll put him over in the enemy's area. That sadly was not exactly what I wanted to do. I was hoping to shoot that guy and move over here and heal, but oh well, that's the way that goes. I've got one more action left. I might just move over to the Mendry anyway because I probably am going to have to heal my poor character. Now we'll lock and load blue. So we'll lock this coin up here. I'll put the other ones up on top here to be able to use. I'm going to grab a power cube because that is my start ability. I get to grab one of those. And remember, if we can get this sequence with the wardrobe at full power, I can transform and we can win the game. But for now, we're going to do a move, move, and engage action, I believe. Oh no, there's a guy in my spot. Let's shoot him first. <laughs> <laughs> I like shooting these little dudes. I'm going to grab my bag here, mix it up, see what we get. Hopefully we're able to take this guy out. We got ourselves a hit. We were able to take him out. Then I'm going to move and I think that might be about all I'm going to do. We're going to place our token down here, having killed this guy. And I'm just going to move up here because I need to transform. In order to do that, I have to be in the wardrobe place, I believe. So we're going to stay right there. And that's going to be the end of my turn. I still have one more action coin, but I'm not going to use it. Our poor green guy has to lock a cube or a token as well. We'll move these up here and he's going to move. And at this point, he's going to shoot and then he's going to do an engage action. Of course, if I don't miss this shot, I'm going to move over here and we're going to try to take this guy out and I'm going to use his suit's ability to do it. So we're going to shuffle up our bag here, grab a couple tokens. We got, what's this? We got a hit, so I'll grab another one anyway. It doesn't really matter, but that's okay. We get to draw two anyway. And we got a hit and a critical. We're not going <laughs> to fail. We're not going to take critical fail. We're going to shoot that guy, move him back over there. And then my engage action is going to be the one in the Mendry, which means I can heal two armor patches on one agent in the Mendry. I'm going to choose to heal Ashi. So with Ashi healed, I'm going to take him off the board so I know that he has been complete. We're going to place him right in that spot right there. And I will do that with those two. This was from last time. So now we're going to unload that one. We're going to get rid of it. We're going to put it back in the bag. It does now go back in the bag. And we now have access to all four of our actions. We're going to start by doing an engage action here to be able to heal my patch. That's going to be the deal. Or can I heal a friend's? Let's take a look. It says here, Heal two armor patches on one agent in the Mendry. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Okay, so we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> we're going to heal the poor red guy's patches because he had two patches that had come off him. So we're going to heal both of those patches. And then at this point, oh, I have to use this engage action. There you go. And I can do that for free again because remember, I am next to the person with smart armor and he's got smart armor fashion power. And next we're going to move and then I am going to do my second engage action. So I'm going to move over here and do my engage action to put all of these back into that bag. It is super important to make sure you keep all of those hits available to you. Now, like I said before, when you get out into this next mission, you might have a lot of your hits just out here on this board. And you need to take out, I believe, a whole row, I think is how it works, to get some of these hits back. But just imagine how many hits you have to have. To, like, you could eventually be sitting with five hits out here. How horrible is that? 
Now you'd need to want to try to take out an entire row and then I believe they all come back in your bag. Now of course not all those are hits, but I just wanted to give you a quick demonstration of where these hits could possibly go instead of in your bag. I decided to change my mind. I can't remember exactly where these were and that's okay. It's not gonna be the end of the world. I think they're actually right there. My last action, I'm actually gonna engage by using the teleport action and I'm gonna teleport the engineer. Now I could teleport him anywhere in here, or not the engineer. I'm gonna teleport the green guy anywhere I want in here or I could teleport him over to this battle board if I wanted to. And that's what you're gonna be doing in some of the other missions. You're gonna be teleporting your people out to these areas or back into your ship, back and forth, in order to take out people on your ship and also take out things on this battle board and things of that nature. So it's kinda of cool how this is all gonna happen. Also remember, whenever you teleport, I'll teleport into engineering, that's fine. Whenever a person teleports and gets rematerialized, they get rematerialized with a fast fashion. So I'm gonna rematerialize with this particular fast fashion. And at this point, I could disintegrate this. So it's a one-time effect to be able, and your next attack is taken from another agent's space. That's fantastic. So I'm gonna give that to the green guy. It's gonna go right here in his hand slot. Now remember, you can only ever have one thing in your hand slot. If you grab another fast fashion or something, or even a power up that's supposed to go in your hand slot, you could either dis dissolve that one, or you could disintegrate this one and place that one there, whichever one you want to do. Now, you can, whenever you disintegrate a card like that, you can choose to take a power cube if you want to when you do the disintegration. And of course, I just realized that I couldn't actually do that because this is busted. <laughs> you may only teleport agents to this space. So okay, he's going to teleport to the teleport then. <laughs> Just at least show you how that all works. So he's going to teleport to the teleporter. He's super excited to be there. That's the, that he, He's excited because he's more excited that he has his new fashion. Purple is going to be our starting player because that person only has three coins out on the board along with and zero cubes. Let's move into the event phase. We'll get to see our next telemetry. Oh no, it's another danger. What does this one say? Crisis. Oh no, disintegrate this card and draw again. I have to add another danger chip to our stack. We now have a stack of one, two, three, four, five. We have five of these things. Oh, barf, that's no good. Let's see what our next card is. A double move down and then a zero, four, and a seven. I think we're gonna, I think I like the zero, four, and a seven. Now, of course, this is something you might wanna talk about with, your, with everybody. Seven's here, four is here, and zero is right here. So we'd actually put that back into the box. Now, if we put the other one, that would be one, seven, and five, so we're putting three out there, so that's no good. We are gonna do this one, this is gonna be our plan. We're gonna put this one down and we're gonna see what happens. The first thing on the card, we're gonna go from left to right, is we're gonna drop this down too. So this one's gonna flip up and drop down, and then this one's gonna flip up and drop down. And look, here come our little invaders, they're coming down, they're almost to our cannons, which is bad. Now if they do get to onto our cannons, we're going to take another disruption if they try to move down and we can't, we don't, and they don't have a space to go to. Now we're going to put our enemies out on the board. Like we said before, it's going to be zero, four, and seven. So four is here, seven's here, and zero is right here, which means we get to put this one back into our bag. Purple's going to load up here. She is all set to go. She's going to move and then attack right here. We're going to see how that goes. I'll draw my token out of the bag and hopefully nothing bad happens here. We got ourselves a hit, so this one is going to go away. And then she's gonna move over here and make another attack. I think that's gonna be the plan. I could do an engage action here because he's there and it would be free. I could do a teleport action. Maybe I'll do that. Oh, I can only teleport to that space. <laughs> I need to fix the teleporter. All right, we're just gonna shoot this guy. Hopefully we get him. Let's see what we got. We got ourselves, oh no, a critical miss. So we're going to move and attack and bonk. We got hit with this thing. So I'm gonna have to lose my last armor patch. Our red guy is gonna lock and load here. We're gonna put this on top of there. And then he's going to attack first because there's something in his square. So let's see if we can get this guy. You get to draw two tokens. Oh, I'm gonna keep that blue one. And that will get rid of this guy. He is gone from the board, which is fantastic. And then at this point, I think he's going to Oh, nobody, I wish I could teleport her over here. He's gonna move and then he is going to do that uh, super move. He's gonna engage, that's what it is. And he's gonna engage with the comms, I think is what he's gonna do. He's gonna move right down there. Now it's our blue person's turn. She is going to gain back all of her little t coins here. We're gonna put this back into the bag and we're going to grab our last power cube. And you're never gonna guess what she's gonna do. Yep, she's gonna move, move, fire, and then engage. That's gonna be... <laughs> That's going to be the deal because I want to do all that in the right sequence. So she's going to move, move, shoot. Let's see how that goes. I'm going to grab a token out of here and see what we got. We got ourselves a critical fail. That was terrible. 
which is going to be horrible. She's going to lose one of her patches, but that's going to be okay. It's not going to be the end of the world because now we're going to do our engage action, which technically could be to shuffle the deck or we could get an, an item from here or we could, this guy is still alive. That's absolutely hilarious, but I'm going to transform. Now the final step of a player's turn is at the point where you can choose to transform. This is the only thing I haven't shown yet, which is pretty awesome. This is one of my favorite parts of the game. In order to do that, you have to have four power cubes available to you. You also have to be able to have done the actions in the correct order in your action sequence there on your actionometer gauntlet that you have. Since we are able to do that, the first thing we're going to do is flip our core suit card. So it goes from having the ability for to take a power cube at the start to at the start give any adjacent or any agent a power cube or return any hits to the bag. That's absolutely bonkers ridiculous good. You can give a agent any agent a power cube anywhere. Absolutely awesome, which remember not only could be used for transforming We could have been using these to give our fifth action if we wanted to but I haven't been because of course I'm saving him to do this transformation We will fully heal all of our patches at this point because we transformed and if we had any malfunctions of some kind Like on our disk or over here at any point we'd remove those we have this I get to remove this I think is how that works and then I get to do what is on my card It says here immediately take another turn and that's a one-time use once that's done Done, you're done with it. You only transform once. But I would be able to do a whole nother turn, which is super powerful in this game. But I don't really need to because we have completed our Captain Ashi Marooned quest. We were able to heal him and we transformed one of our characters. Now before I finish the playthrough, I do want to show you a couple other things that this game has to offer in case I can't get to mission one, which is the next step in this game, which would be super cool to show off. But in case I don't, here is one of the other things you're going to be dealing with. So not only are the invaders going to be present, this thing is going to be present as well. This is the Mechapede. Again, it may look like something from your youth in the 8-bit systems. Uh, the deal here is that this thing is a giant worm that's going to be shooting out these little green goo cubes out onto the board. And of course, you notice the dice on it again. You're going to be trying to collect these dice. So you're going to be moving from this battle board to the other battle board of the invaders and be trying to collect these dice so that you can get your pets, which is a super cool game. Not only that, you have to, of course, keep the tier going. <laughs> it's so many things bad that you have to balance. It's really a neat system and it's really fun to play. All these new, neat little games that are going along inside this one game. The way this thing is going to work is in some of the cards are going to make it shift into certain positions and you're going to be able to then attack it in different places. And as you can see, there's different cube areas to hit it. And of course, as you hit these, they'll be able to remove them from there. They could regrow though by being able to remove some of these cubes and coming back out here from how I understand it. But of course, this is all going to take place in mission one. Along with our invaders as well, they are going to be part of mission one. And at this point, we'd be able to use these cannons to start shooting these. And these again are going to shift back and forth during depending on which cards you get. So these these cannons are going to shift, not the characters. These are always just going to come straight down at you. So there you have it. I hope you had a good time being part of the Temporal Intergalactic Armed Response Agency. I'm really excited for this game to hit GameFound and get funded. So please check it out. There are so many cool things going on. The bag building system is amazing. The balance between trying to keep the Tierra going while you're also dealing with the invaders and the mechapedes and of course anything else that comes out in mission two and mission three mission four i don't have those particular ones i only have zero and one so i've been able to play those those are super fun i can hardly wait to see what the other ones are about this can be played solo it can also be played with two three and four players and its best player count is any of those player counts <laughs> <laughs> I've had a blast playing it almost any different way you play this game. It's super fun to bring to the table. If you did enjoy the playthrough, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so we'll see you know when more content comes out. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. If you're interested in supporting this game on GameFound and you like what you see here, I'm going to put a link to the GameFound pledge in the description of this along with, with any other links that will help you find anything you need to know about this game or the designers and the publishers of this game. If you are interested in supporting the channel, you can join my Patreon. The link to that is also in the description of the video. Those that have helped support the channel are showcated, located here on the screen. Thank you so much for your patronage. It does mean the world to me. Some of the perks of being a Patreon member is you get to see my playthroughs usually a day or two ahead of time without com commercial interruptions. 
Also, you get to decide what characters and what games come to the channel. Then you can also help even name some of the characters that come to the channel. Now, of course, this one does play with four characters. And like I said, this is not a game that is hard to manage four characters. I can do it in a breeze. Once you get the get this down, all you do is figure out what four things you want to do with your actions, slide them around on your gauntlet, and perform the actions, and you move on to the next player. I really dig the idea that this is not a, oh, this person's gone, you're out of the game. This is not a player elimination game. You're just going to try to keep your Tierra alive and have to deal with these danger tokens, which I think is a great concept. So there you have it. Conquest Princess, and if you like what you see, please check it out on GameFound. I know I am, and once it's funded, if you want to see any more Conquest Princess or anything else, then I need you to meet me at the table.